Welcome to Main Street. Well, technically this is Broadway, also known as Automobile Alley. However, I would still classify it as a Main Street. And urbanists like me usually love Main Streets. And why shouldn't they? A Main Street is walkable, dense, mixed use, lively, and historic. And they're just about everywhere here in the US. It's like the one good thing that most US cities have going for them. Strong Towns obviously has like a million articles about good and bad Main Streets across the country. But this video isn't titled Main Streets Are Great. With most Main Streets I visit, I can't help but feel that something is a little off. But after visiting two exceptionally designed US cities, I think I finally worked through my beef with Main Streets. In today's video, I'm going to explain why I think Main Streets suck, mind the asterisk, and what I think we can do to fix this problem that I haven't really seen very many people talk about in the first place. So if you haven't already put this together, there's going to be some hot takes in this video. So I'm actually really interested to hear what you guys have to say about this one. So make sure to leave a comment, and if you have more thoughts, make sure to join the Discord. Link in the description for that one. There's also quite a bit of background information to cover here before I can really fully explain my complaint. This is a video I've been thinking through for several months at this point, and only after a few failed script drafts have I finally nailed it down to exactly how I want to talk about it. First, let's make it clear what I'm talking about when I say Main Street. As I alluded to earlier, a Main Street might not necessarily be called Main Street, although sometimes it is. This might seem confusing at first, but Main Street is a metonym used commonly to refer to a place with a particular urban form. Now, what elements are actually needed for a street to be considered a main street? Well, that's a little up for debate, but here's a few things that I look for when searching for main streets. Number one, long rectangular lots. Number two, buildings that fill up said lots. Number three, storefronts on the first floor lining the street. And number four, the main street stands out from its surroundings. A small town, at least in the western US, usually has one main street, whereas a larger city probably has several of them. Sometimes you'll find an awesome, lively, exciting place, and sometimes you'll find the bones of a main street and not much else. Now, abandoned main streets are not in the scope of today's video, but if you happen to be a developer, keep your eye out for those. You can revive Revitalize any old place with this kind of urban form, and I guarantee that people will love it. If you need tips on how to revitalize an old, dying, or dead main street, might I recommend reading some of those Strong Towns articles I mentioned earlier. But if we're talking about vibrant, lively main streets, then what's the problem? These places are dense and walkable, sometimes to the extent that they're fully pedestrianized. They might have street cars, street trees, streeteries. Our planners spend so much time and effort meticulously making every aspect of these places great. And yet, I, I still have one major complaint about these places that almost always goes overlooked. But why do so many US cities have main streets in the first place? Well, when laying out a city, there might be unlimited possible layout options, but only some of them make any sense. And ever since the days of the ancient Greeks and Romans, a straightforward street grid has been a very popular choice. Notably, in 1811, the city of New York, which at the time looked like this, decided that they should probably plan ahead by laying out an absolutely buckwild grid across the entire island of Manhattan. And oh boy, was this plan successful. Throughout the 19th century, this grid was filled in almost exactly as planned, leaving us with the Manhattan of today. Let's zoom in to one of these Manhattan streets. What do we see? Long rectangular lots? Buildings that fill up said lots? This seems familiar. Now you might think that Manhattan is actually a place with no main streets at all, because well, every street is a main street. Which would mean that none of them are. But that's not entirely true. I'll show you where to find the main streets of New York later in the video. The Manhattan grid was a really strong foundation for building a great city for a number of reasons I won't go into here today, but notably, these long rectangular lots allow for each lot to get as much square footage as possible without taking up very much street space at all. From a walkability perspective, this is great. I mean, if you're walking from A to B, it's a much shorter walk with this configuration than if you, say, rotated the same lots by 90 degrees. You can also think of the street as being like a bookshelf. There's a reason we store books like this and not like this. Most cities and towns that were planned after 1811 
which out here in the West is most of them, wanted to be the next New York City. So they each laid out a city that was essentially some copy and paste version of the Manhattan grid, albeit with slight variations on scale and proportion, usually landing on more of a square block. But the problem is, most places are not Manhattan. In just a few cities, like Chicago and San Francisco, these Manhattan-style somewhat willy-nilly grids really popped off and served their purpose well. But if you look at, say, Manhattan, Kansas, you see something completely different. But what makes Manhattan, Kansas so much different from Manhattan, New York? Well, a lot of things. But before we get to that, let's visit one more exceptional Main Street. Now, before I explain myself, let's all agree that this is definitely a Main Street, right? It has all of the features we talked about earlier. Here it is in plan, pretty standard looking Main Street. But what if I told you that this street we're looking at is Broughton Street in Savannah, Georgia. Now, if you're not familiar with Savannah, let me quickly bring you up to speed. And I promise this will be my last major tangent before I get to my main point about Main Street. Savannah's blocks are arranged like this. Now, at first you might think, what am I looking at here? And if you're thinking that, oh boy, you are in for a treat. This is the flag of the city of Savannah. And on that flag is a representation of the Oglethorpe Plan. This arrangement that's seen on the flag is known as a ward. In the center is a city square, and these short blocks were intended for municipal or otherwise community-focused buildings. Then, on the top and bottom, you have your typical American long rectangular lots, just like we discussed earlier. Some really interesting side effects emerge from the layout when you start to tile it. In fact, it's almost by accident that Broughton Street ends up looking exactly like a typical U.S. Main Street. It can actually be found here, on the boundary between wards. Another interesting side effect is that these streets have no lots facing them. Because of this, there's barely any reason to walk down these streets, so they become one-way roads, fully optimized for vehicular traffic. Finally, there's the streets that cross through the center of the wards. These basically treat the squares like a big square roundabout, with vehicles traveling counterclockwise around them. And naturally, the top and bottom streets become a one-way pair to simply continue the traffic flow in the direction it's already traveling around the squares. But these central streets that awkwardly maneuver around square after square are pretty annoying to drive down, so most people prefer to drive in the one-way roads created by the ward boundaries. But what these central streets are great for is walking. Imagine, you walk for about two minutes down a pretty typical downtown street, when suddenly you cross into a huge, lush, green park. You're no longer next to vehicular traffic, you can stop and rest in the shade by a fountain or a monument that's admittedly probably not great, and then a minute later, you're back on the street again. Repeat this several times, and that's what walking down the middle of a ward is like in Savannah. Honestly, it's really amazing. Okay, so all the pieces are finally in place and I can finally explain to you what my problem is with Main Streets. It's in the name, Main Streets. Planners, designers, even developers tend to mainly focus on designing strong Main Streets. But in doing this, everyone is neglecting and sapping all of the energy out of all of the streets that surround these Main Streets. The most obvious example of this is parking. Too many main streets have cannibalized entire adjacent blocks just to accommodate the free storage of private vehicles. For example, this block, which is directly next to the Norman, Oklahoma train station, or these blocks, which I kid you not, are directly across Main Street from that other block I just showed you. But I'm not here to say that parking lots don't belong downtown. In fact, I've already made that video. But what I am saying is that to really make a lasting improvement to a Main Street in a town like Norman, yes, it's important to make improvements to the street itself, but I'd argue that it's almost more important to consider the design of the streets and spaces that surround Main Street. Savannah has a very sophisticated approach to this connectivity. Whether you're approaching Broughton Street by car or on foot, there's an optimized route that will get you there efficiently and give you the most enjoyable experience possible either way. Now, granted, I have to concede that most cities are not and will never be Savannah, but certain aspects of Savannah's plan, like using public plazas just off of Main Street as modal filters, 
to encourage walking and discourage driving can totally unlock a new world of design possibilities given. Oh, I don't know, like some kind of empty canvas to work from? More on that in a minute. Earlier, I promised to show you how to find Manhattan's main streets. And when I personally realized where they are, it kind of blew my mind. It's like they're hiding in plain sight. Keep in mind that Manhattan's grid is composed of many tightly packed streets and just a few long spread out avenues that span the length of the island. Now, let me show you two clips for the sake of comparison. First, here's a street. And now, here's an avenue. Notice anything different? The avenues, I would argue, are the main streets of New York. These are the places with the storefronts on the first floor, lining the street. And even though the long rectangular blocks were never really adopted by any US city outside of New York, they do have a couple of really nice benefits. First of all, in the middle of a residential street, it's actually surprisingly calm and quiet. The avenues are the main sources of noise pollution. And once you turn onto a residential street, you're probably nearly to your destination. As a result, they're surprisingly calm. But more importantly, from a Main Street perspective, the long rectangular blocks have exactly the same benefits as the long rectangular lots placed along them. But instead of maximizing the amount of square footage for a given amount of street space, you're instead maximizing the amount of people who live within walking distance of an avenue. In Manhattan, not every street is a Main Street, but every person lives within walking distance of a Main Street. If the street is like a bookshelf, then the Manhattan grid is more like a library. There's a reason we don't store books in a spaced out grid on the floor of a vast warehouse. Okay, I think this metaphor has gone about as far as I can take it. But here's the thing. Manhattan was based on a master planned grid. Savannah was based on a master planned masterpiece. But most of our cities in the US were built a lot more haphazardly. I mean, take Oklahoma City, for example. The city was founded with a disorganized, free-for-all, grab-whatever-you-want show, and only retroactively did anyone ever consider making the city make any sense. I'd call it the literal opposite of master planning. And that doesn't mean OKC can't have nice things. Take the grid-obsessed Romans as an example. They themselves lived in a city with a fairly organic street layout that was not at all master planned. But famously, they built some pretty cool public spaces throughout the centuries. And I can vouch for that since I've lived there for a few months. Oklahoma City and Tulsa both have some really cool public spaces as well. But until we get a really strong grasp on the design of the connective tissue between our parks, plazas, neighborhoods, and main streets, none of these places will reach their fullest potential. And that pains me because these places could be really fantastic. So let's talk about some of my design recommendations. Number one, recognize that not every street has to be a main street. Different streets absolutely must serve different functions. We need noisy, vibrant commercial corridors and calm, quiet residential spaces. We need streets that truly prioritize pedestrians and cyclists. And sure, we can still have some roads that truly prioritize cars. Number two, Prioritize circulation paths that are perpendicular to main streets. Main streets only thrive when they're crowded with people. People can and will walk to a main street if given pleasant means to do so, but that almost always means walking down one of these perpendicular streets. If you want to bring more people to a main street, these perpendicular streets are the key. Number three, emphasize multimodal access. We need to provide better transportation alternatives to continue bringing more people into these areas. The easiest modes to prioritize are cycling and walking. We can widen sidewalks, build separated bike lanes, or even introduce modal filters to slow or outright block vehicular access along certain paths. Then provide some bike parking. It's really that simple. Number four, expand the public realm beyond Main Street. Parks, plazas, marketplaces, libraries, schools, churches, transportation hubs, and community centers located near a particular main street should all feel connected, forming a complex network of related spaces rather than just haphazard adjacencies. So what does any of that mean in practice? Well, 
Let's take a look at how some of these recommendations could be implemented in Norman, Oklahoma. I'd like to propose a new park. I think it should be located here at the intersection of Peters Avenue and Comanche Street. We can reconfigure the streets a bit to create a large open space in the middle, which can be filled with trees, greenery, and some public art. The walkways can continue straight through, providing an uninterrupted pedestrian experience for those walking along either street. Look familiar? Finally, we incentivize the construction of medium and high density residential buildings in the former parking lots along Comanche Street, creating a quiet neighborhood that is truly connected to Main Street, the Santa Fe Amtrak station, and the new Embark Transit Hub. Now, obviously there's plenty of other places near Main Streets where ideas like this would work just as well. In fact, most towns in the U.S. have historic abandoned train stations somewhere near Main Street, which could serve as a great starting point for this kind of thing, especially as passenger rail service starts returning to these towns. If you'd like to learn more about the past, present, and future of these small town passenger rail stations, this is the video that you need to check out. If you'd like this video and you'd like to support the creation of more, please consider checking out the Patreon link in the description. Thanks as always to all of our current Patreon supporters. If that's you, you are amazing.